Uh, well, thank you very much. I'd like to thank Sages and the moderators for the invitation. I think this is a fairly fitting uh, title for this session for the devils in the details relating to laparotomy closure, because we'll go through some stuff here that I think with some small changes in technique or very finite details about how we close laparotomies, we can really impact patient care. Uh, so here are my disclosures. I uh, do work with some of the mesh companies uh, for hernia research. Um, so I, I think this quote uh, is pretty apropos to what I'm gonna talk to you about uh, as we go through this. This was from Lance and Peter Provenos, who's a, who's a very well quoted uh, physician, but he said, one of the greatest opportunities we have to improve outcomes will probably not come from discovery of new treatments, but more effective delivery of these existing therapies. And so as we go through this, I, I, we all have closed laparotomy incisions or sutured since we started medical school. And I think this is really important when we start looking at the details on how a technique can really change. So we know about this. I'm not going to belabor this. Incisional hernias is a major problem. And I'm going to just show you here why prevention I think is going to be very important moving forward. Um, we know that the suture to wound length ratio of greater than four to one, uh, if you can achieve this when you close a laparotomy, it's a f three times higher or lower risk of developing an incisional hernia. And then I'm gonna speak a little bit about small stitches as we go through this. So, so this paper gets quoted all the time for hernia, and I'm sorry to, to quote it one more time, but it often gets quoted because people use this, uh, the reason that why we need mesh and hernia repair. And so they, they always say, well, there was you know a 50% reduction or so in, in incisional hernias when we fix it with mesh compared to primary suture. But if you look at this deeper, this is a disheartening thing. And what I'm going to try to prove to you is why hernia prevention is so important. A third of our patients at 10 years are developing recurrences. And so there's some uh, American data. David Flom out of the Washington State looked at this as well. He showed at 13 years, 23% of our patients are getting reoperated on for hernia disease. And so mesh does have an impact on hernia repair, but the lo we're losing the fight to this hernia disease, and we need to find a different way to, f to fight this. This was uh, well uh, done by Mike Liang here in Houston, where he showed that not only are we not good at fixing hernias the first time, because they come back a fair amount, but then when we start fixing them over and over again, we get into this vicious cycle, and we start seeing mesh infections and wound infections, and we get these patients that you all see in your office that have had started with an umbilical hernia repair, and they're on their fifth or sixth repair, and we really don't have very very good ways to, to treat them. So what can we do? Well, one thing I'm going to uh, submit to you and one thing that I think hopefully you can go home Monday morning and start doing is we can really pay attention to how we close the a laparotomy incision. And so uh, this was a quote by uh, Royal College of Surgeons, uh, Lord Moynihan, never judge a surgeon before you've seen him closing the wound. And I think this is appropriate for this. It, it really is a, an area where we can do better uh, and pay more attention to. So what's the evidence? Well, the evidence is mostly from Europe. I think hopefully you're, you're, you're familiar with this evidence, but uh, Leif Israelson, who's sort of the godfather of this, uh, did a randomized control trial. He looked at 737 patients, and what he found was that not only was the wound infection rate uh, cut in half from 10 to 5%, 5 but the incisional hernia rate was significantly different by changing the size of his bites. And so tra traditionally we're taught to do a one centimeter bite one centimeter advance, slowly observing continuous suture. What, what he compared was a smaller bite, a five millimeter to eight millimeter bite, five millimeter, eight millimeter advance, and showed that by doing that, we can significantly impact outcomes. Uh, now, one of the problems with this, or one of the criticisms of this, is this is a European study. You can see here the BMI average was 26. And so what, what most American surgeons or US surgeons uh, say when, when I show this is, well, I don't have those type of patients. My patients' BMIs are 34, 35. Is this going to work on me? And the answer is we don't know. Uh, but, but he does make a very good argument that we should be doing this. And, and what he recommends is uh, from him, who, who, who's done a lot of this, is that we should use a monofilament suture, slowly absorbing or non-absorbable, a small needle. And the small needle helps us take small bites. He does the self-locking uh, knots, uses a continuous suture, one layer of the aponeurosis, and then you place these small sutures. And, and he's this big stickler that you really should measure this and, and make sure that you're getting a suture to wound length ratio of four to one. 
So that's great. We all know about uh, that, and it's a single center study. That was another issue. Is this applicable to everybody else? And so this was followed up by another European study done out of the Netherlands, and it was a randomized control trial, multi-center trial. And while they did not show a difference in, in the wound issues uh, like Dr. Zrelson, they did show and improve the decrease in seasonal hernia rate by doing the small bite or short stitch technique. No difference in, in outcomes. And so Dr. Meissens, who's here in the audience, got together in, with his European colleagues and they proposed guidelines for closing a laparotomy incision. And they're very similar to what we discussed earlier. They point out, and, and, and some of this is a little bit controversial, but they point out if in general, most of us use laparotomy incisions, but there is a decreased chance of incisional hernias and off midline incision. So whenever possible, use an off midline incision. Recommend a continuous suture slowly absorbable monofilament of the aponeurosis, small bite technique with at least a four to one suture to wound length ratio. We don't have data on emergency and we really don't have data on obese patients yet. And then laparoscopy, which is pertinent to this audience, use small trocars, closed trocars greater than 10 millimeters, and then meticulous closure in the single incision surgery. So we have some guidelines. We have pretty robust data that we should be changing our technique, at least in, if those patients fit our criteria. So how do, how do we improve? And, if, and when I talk about this going around, most people don't measure their sutural wound length ratio. Some people don't even know what that is. And so how can we do this? Well, one thing is education, and I think it's important that we should be educating our residents. I think we have to prove to surgeons out there in the community and surgeons here that there is value to this. One of the problems is, is incisional hernias is a later problem. We often don't see that in the first three or four days after surgery, like a wound infection. We don't have to deal with it. A lot of times these come back six months, a year. Another surgeon is dealing with it. They may not even come back to see us. So we need to show that this is important long term. We need to improve the research. There's a lot we don't still know, uh, for instance, how this works in high BMI patients. And then we can continue to track and assess our outcomes. So this is what I think about when I'm closing a laparotomy incision. Uh, I, I figure this imposing figure, this is Dr. Israelson kind of looking down at me sternly. And to quote him, the only way to ascertain that our wound is closed with an adequate suture to wound length ratio is to measure it. And so this is, I'll end with this video here, and this is kind of a boring way to end, but this is what we do. Uh, at the end of our laparotomy incision. It takes about five minutes to do, probably less than that. We measure our wound. We, I use two number one PDS sutures. I probably need to switch, but we use, I know exactly how much suture it is. It's 180 centimeters of suture. I'm gonna forward this on. We measure the suture. If you can uh, advance that a little bit. And, and we basically just calculate that. And what we found in our first 100 when I audited this, only 76% of the time was I closing with the with a four to one ratio. And that's somebody who I feel like I try to do a good job on this. So ultimately we should get to the point where we're not gonna accept that because we know it's a problem and uh, move forward from that. So in conclusion, I think we need to believe this very robust data. Uh, if you don't believe it, then maybe we should study it. If you don't believe this works in BMI, high BMI patients, then we should study it. We need to start at practicing the four to one and the small bite technique. There shouldn't be any more excuses. And I think we need to follow our outcomes. And then and this famous quote by Dr. Peabody, the secret of care of the patient is caring for the patient. And I think this fit falls right into that. If we truly care what happens to our patients long term, we should really try to change our practice. So thank you very much.